Okay, so we are going to go ahead and get started. Um, so again, welcome everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, my name is Samantha Jamison. I'm the marketing specialist here at NBS Scientific. Um, today I am joined by Kathy Rush from VASC Engineering and Science, and we are here to present a webinar on frozen sample aliquoting and the handheld tissue extractor. So this is the second webinar in a series of webinars that we are hosting on frozen sample aliquoting. Um, if you missed the first one that we held in April, that is okay. We have it uploaded to our YouTube channel. Um, in that webinar, we focused specifically on frozen sample aliquoting technology. So that one is uploaded on our YouTube channel if you'd like to um, watch that one. Um, today, we are again focusing on frozen sample aliquoting, but then also highlighting the recently launched uh, handheld tissue extractor tool. So let's go ahead and get started. So as I mentioned, um, my name is Samantha. Uh, I'm the marketing specialist here and Kathy Rush is joining me today. She is the Director of Science and Quality at Basque Engineering and Science. Just a couple announcements before we get into the presentation. Um, the webinar is being recorded today. Um, so if you need to leave for any reason, no worries. We will have a recording that we can share with you um, probably sometime early next week. Um, your microphones and cameras are automatically muted during the webinar. So if you have any questions, I encourage you to Put those into the Q&A box on the, I think it's on the right side of your screen. Um, we will have a Q&A session at the um, end of the presentation today. So we will try to get through as many questions as we can during that time. If you would prefer to um, send your questions to us directly, you can do that as well. Um, just send us an email at the email address on your screen, which is info at nbsscientific.com, and a member of our team will get back to you as soon as possible. So just a little bit about NBS Scientific, if you aren't sure who we are or what we do. Um, we are a distributor of laboratory products for the life science industry. Um, we are located here in the USA, but we are part of an international distribution network with sister companies in other locations like Belgium, Denmark, France, Germany, Switzerland, the Netherlands, and the United Kingdom. Um, our portfolio is very broad, so we offer everything from sample collection kits to sample stability reagents, and then your laboratory consumables like sample storage tubes, caps and racks, we also offer um, equipment like barcode readers, rack thawing stations, tube labeling systems, cappers and decappers, laser markers, tube processors, and then of course, frozen sample aliquaters, which is what we are talking about today. Um, if anything piqued your interest there that I mentioned, I uh, invite you to visit our website um, to learn more about our products and to get some more product details. So without further ado, we are going to dive into the presentation on frozen sample aliquoting and why it's important to laboratory science. So Kathy, when you're ready, you can take it away. Thank you, Sammy. Hello, everyone. And I'm glad you were able to join us this afternoon to learn a little bit more about frozen aliquoting um, because thawing is not cool. Next slide. So, Together, NBS Scientific and Basque Engineering and Science have formed a partnership in frozen sample solution for the stable, reliable, and reproducible results of your data. Next slide, please. So for those who were not in the first webinar, like Sammy had said back in April, that's fine. So I'm going to take this opportunity before we get into the handheld to do a little bit more background on the frozen aliquoting. So as we go through the webinar and we go through the demonstration, these thought processes are going through your head. So the first thing we wanna think about is frozen aliquoting is gonna improve your sample integrity and preserve it. The second thing, it's going to eliminate sample contamination. The third thing, it increases sample utilization because you can reaccess it because there's no thaw. 
Um, it allows you to work with samples safely, and that's really the premises of this tool. Well, our frozen aliquoters in general, but for those who are working with tissue, this is definitely my safety net for you guys. It delivers sample consistency and homogeneity. It enables or ensures reliable and reproducible data. It's time efficiency for scientists and it's fun and it's easy. Next slide. So frozen sample aliquoting of biofluids and tissues improves sample quality by eliminating that freeze thaw cycle that can degrade, analyze your lay biomolecules, causing biased data in your downstream analysis, stabilizing lay biomolecules by keeping things frozen is key. Next slide. Our patented technology uses nuclease-free coin probes to extract out the aliquots cores from the frozen biosamples, depositing them into cryotubes free of contamination. Both the parent and aliquot samples are maintained at a temperature of minus 80 or colder throughout the entire process, ensuring preserved high-quality samples for use in downstream assays. Next slide. One or multiple specific size cores are extracted out, leaving behind an intact parent sample. Parent samples are then returned to the minus 80 freezer with reaccessed later on free of contamination. Next slide, please. So working with samples safely, that is why frozen aliquoting, I think, is so important. It eliminates manual slicing, cutting of tissue. I know people that use hammers and, and chisels to get out the frozen tissues. It eliminates handling of raw feces and it limits or minimizes aerosol exposure. Next slide, please. So deliver sample consistency. So these tools are going to generate and distribute small uniform volume specific aliquots in a controlled and efficient manner. The coring technique is always from the top of the sample all the way down to the bottom of the sample. Next slide, please. Deliver sample homogeneity will depend on how, so homogeneity will depend on how your sample was prepped before freezing. Uh, different types of molecules and analytes due to their size and density will tend to settle out in different places within the tube and during the freezing process. So keep that in mind. Rule of thumb for us is always to core your samples from the top to the bottom, taking a core center and right. This really more applies to our CXT 353, not so much with the handheld, but I'll get into that as we go along. If you want to learn a little bit more about homogeneity and how we address that, you could go on the BASC website at www.basc-engsei.com and you can look for the bioanalysis sample homogeneity study under our studies category. Next slide, please. Aliquot. All right, ensuring reliability and reproducibility of your data. Well, aliquots are gonna thaw faster than a full size sample, improving sample consistency and reproducibility of the data and results. Samples kept frozen retain original analyte values because they are not degrading due to the freeze thaw cycle. Therefore, reaccess of that sample later on will produce the same original results. Next slide, please. Time savings for scientists. The time savings for improved workflow of frozen samples versus thawing out the samples, aliquoting them into other tubes, capping them, and then refreezing them. Next slide. Okay, frozen aliquoting process using the handheld tissue extractor. Before I go into anything, what I do want to understand and let everyone know that this is a tool that is used only for frozen tissues. 
This tool will not work right now on frozen biofluids. If you're working with blood, serum, plasma, urine, saliva, you need to then think about our CXT 353 benchtop because the handheld right now is specifically designed for tissue use only. All right, so let's go into the advantages of our tissue extractor. So the tool is small and compact to fit into your hand. This is it. This is my tissue extractor. It's very easy to insert and remove our coring probes. The tool itself is very simple. After use, you wipe it down with the bleach wipe. That's it. There's no maintenance. There's no tubing. There's no nothing. So the cleaning is simple. And the tissue extractor is going to create small uniform cores or aliquots anywhere between three megs and 15 megs. It's not going to provide you with a core larger than that because this is a hand tool brush tool. If you're looking for something that's going to give you a larger core, then again, you need to consider our Benchtop CXT 353 analyzer. Next slide. Okay, so this is what the kit looks like, and it comes with one tissue extractor. It comes with what we call a probe nest, and it holds up to six of our probes. It comes with a tray to hold your frozen tissue. And it comes with six bags of coin probes. Now, each bag contains 25 probes. So six bags gives you a total of 125 probes. Now, this is single use. So when you load in the probe, which we will go through, you core into your tissue, you extract out your core, you then remove that probe and you throw it away and then you insert the next probe. That way it eliminates any type of cross contamination. So let me, oh, and last but not least, you get a nice bucket. Um, it's of our best color, orange. Terracotta, I guess, is what they say, so that you have a complete kit. So all you need is your dry ice to put in your bucket. You have your tray. You have your nest that you stick into the ice with your probes. And you've got your tissue extractor, and you're ready to rock and roll. Next slide, please. All right. So we're going to go over a little bit about how it works. So if I were to take all my contents out of my tray, we're going to pretend that this is my dry ice. It's, it's bubble wrap, but I've got one brewing over here. So we're going to fill it up with our dry ice. We're going to take our tissue extractor, which holds up to six probes. We're going to put our probes in and we are going to set it into the dry ice so that the probes are getting cold. We put our tissue tray on top of the dry ice and we get our tissue tray nice and cold. Then when we're ready to go, and I have my probes, the way that it works, is you take a probe, you're going to insert it into the bottom of the tool, and you're going to now twist all the way down to lock in the probe. You twist it until you can't go anymore, and now the probe is locked in. So now, if you want to think about it, it's kind of like a corkscrew when you're going to open up a bottle of wine. Now you're going to pull your top and take it to a right, turn it to the right, and it's now locked. 
you now take your tool, you will take out your frozen sample, and you will core it. I will do a demonstration um, as we go through. The next one is a video, and I'll talk through the video, and then I will do an actual live cutting of a sheep brain. All right, so next slide. All right, so where is this tool going to be appropriate? So this is really for labs who process anywhere from 25 to 30 pieces of tissue a month. If your lab is processing 20 to 30 to 40 pieces of tissue a week, this is not the tool for you. Again, you would have to go to the CXT 353 benchtop. So it's more for tissue sizes that are very small and very hard to work with. The volumes of tissue that your aliquots are gonna get, because remember, this is a hand process, is only going to give you about 15 megs. So again, if you are going to need more than that, then you need to go to our automated Benchtop CXT 353. So, where is this applicable? All right, so in the video that we are going to show you, this is a customer of mine who has a CXT353 and he processes a lot of tissue of various, across, well, various tissues in various types of tubes. So large tubes, small tubes, and sometimes he'll get a piece of tissue that is so small that he's not about to prep it so this becomes a very easy process for him. Um, a lot of times he'll get a researcher that will send him two or three pieces of tissue and says, I just want two cores, 10 megs long of each of those tissue types. So for him to, to process that amount, in that more uh, uh, in that kind of a time frame the hand tool has been a godsend we tend to say when we talk about the homogeneity so the homogeneity and uniformity is that you really want to core from the top of the sample to the bottom of the sample so for those small thin pieces of tissue this is a beautiful thing if your tissue is big and thick and bulky, this is not going to give you the homogeneity. It's not going to give you the uniformity because you're not going to be able to core from the top of the sample all the way through to the bottom of the sample. You're just not. Again, you'd have to go to our, our CXT 53. We do have a customer that uses the tissue for cancer cells. And for them, it's a godsend because they can take the piece of tissue, they can spot the dark spot, they don't need very much. They go in and they pinpoint literally the piece of tissue that they need to then analyze. So without further ado, I think it's time for us to see it in action. Next slide. All right, so there we are. Got the tissue extractor. Bill is inserting the probe that's been chilled. You can see his styrofoam box with the dry ice and he's gotten his um, tray now all at temperature. So that's what we wanna do. We want the probes, we want the tray, we want the sample, all at the same temperature. He puts the tissue extractor to get cold for five, 10 minutes. And now he is going to actually core into his placenta tissue that's in that tube. He has a very special technique, as you can see, and then he swirls the tube. And at the very end, he puts his sample back on and he extrudes out, extrudes out his core. Now, as you can see, that core is about eight, nine mix, and it's a cylindrical core, and now it's easy 
to work with. He can still take that main parent sample. He puts it back into the freezer because he can reuse it. And now he's got a nice piece of tissue that he now can thaw out quick and run his assay. He then unscrews his coring probe and throws it away and then gets ready for the next one. Next slide, please. All right, that's me. All right, so. My setup's a little, uh, let's see. My setup is a little different and everybody can do it a little differently. So I've actually put my tubes and they're getting cold as well. Cause once I take my little tiny core, I'm gonna put it in a two ML cryo vial. So that's getting cold. I'm now going to put my probes in. I'm gonna allow them to get cold. All right, now I'm gonna put on my gloves. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do <clears throat> for purposes of this live demo, because we don't have 10, 15 minutes, but normally I would let everything kind of sit once I've filled up my bucket with dry ice or LN2 or however you want to do it, it's up to you. I let it sit for 15 minutes. So once my 15 minutes is up, I take my tool. Oh, I will show you how to do it. I will take my probe. I put it into the handheld extractor. And now I'm going to lock it by taking the barrel of the tube all the way down to the point where now it's locked in. I'm going to take my handle. It's an up and to the right so that it's locked. I'm going to core my sheet frame. So I'm going to pick a spot where I'm going to do a core. So I'm going to Core down. Oh, I can't see. And then once I core down, I'm going to pull and extract out my core. I'm going to take my and Sammy. So there, if everybody can see. There is my extracted core. And then what I do is I will then take my tube that's also been chilling and I take my core and I don't drop it and I put it in the tube. I put my tube back in. I take my tool. I unscrew the barrel. I remove the probe. It's throw away because it's single use. I go to the next probe. I put it back in. I lock the barrel once again. I pull it up. I lock it. I find another spot that I'm going to core. I go into the tissue, I bring it back up, I unlock it, I extrude it out. Extrude, I'm not sure that's a word. And there we go, it's another core, but it's the same size core. So it's about 10 megs, eight to 10 megs. I take my core, I put it into my tube, and now I have, in literally four minutes, I have created two cores that are the same size, between eight and 10 megs for my tissue. It's that simple. I remove my probe. 
I throw it away. Let's say I'm done today. I only needed two cores. All I do is I take a pleat wipe and I wipe it all down and I'm done for the day. It's quick, it's easy, it's simple. There's no cutting, there's no dicing, there's no chisel. Nobody is cutting tissue and having the pieces of tissue fly everywhere. You're, sometimes when people cut the tissue, they're not getting the correct size, they're not getting the correct weight, they're getting irregular sizes, they're not getting consistency in their sizes. This is all controlled. This tool allows you the consistency, the uniformity in the size of the cores, and it allows you to then take the main tissue sample, put it back into the freezer for reuse and reaccess because I have not contaminated it at all. That's it. I'll open it up for questions. All right, so let's give everyone a minute or so to input their questions if they have any. Um, we don't have any right now, but let's just give everyone a moment to do that. Um, I guess in the meantime, um, Kathy, you mentioned that, you know, if people are processing 25, more than 25 to 30 tissue samples a month, they should consider the next level up, correct? The CXT. Right. And if you are looking and processing um, thicker samples um, and you need to get that, you know, um, homogeneity, the only way to guarantee homogeneity in a piece of tissue is if you take cores from the top of the sample all the way through because it gives you a representation of what is in that entire sample. Now, some people, I'm not a pathologist, but some of my customers who are pathologists who use this, if they're working with a specific piece of tissue, like Bill in my video, he works for placenta um, and does a lot of work with the placenta. Um, so he knows what he's doing and and he knows when he's running a certain assay that if he only needs 10 megs of that sample, given the analyte that he's going to run, this tool is a godsend for him. I'm, it's quick and it's easy. So depending upon what your downstream assay is as well, you may need to go to the CXT 353 if you really want to ensure that you're getting that uniformity within that sample. Gotcha, great, that was a great explanation. Um, so in terms of like the types of samples that this tool, I'm sorry, types of tissues that this tool can be used for as long as it's not anything super bulky, like you're mentioning, it would be fair game for this tool? It would be fair game, yep. So I just cored this sheep brain, um, and depending upon what my assay is and what my downstream analysis is, if I had to core all the way through the brain in order to capture, as people say, that homogeneity, if you're looking for a certain amount of molecules, you won't be able to do it with the hand tool. But if you are looking for something that you know, okay, I know that all I have to do, I know my tissue type, I just need 10 or 15 megs, this is a piece of cake. It's fast, it's easy, versus I know people that, you know, they take a knife and they cut or they use a chisel and when they chip into the brain, they don't want to damage the brain or they don't want to damage the piece of tissue. That's the other thing is that I fear that a lot of my customers, that is their sore point is that I, they don't want to damage that tissue. They want to keep it frozen. Well, if you're going to use a knife and a chisel and a hammer to cut off that piece of frozen tissue, you are going to damage the tissue. Here with the extractor, you're not damaging the tissue at all. Great, awesome. Um, the only 
The other question um, I have is, um, what if their tissue samples aren't currently stored in tubes? How would that work? So, um, so if, for instance, my brain is not um, in a tube, um, what we would suggest for you is to mount them on our tissue trays. Um, we have them and you can use OCT and you can mount your tissue onto our tissue tray. We can, if you are specific, um, we have our tissue tray, which is, it's really a cryostat. And then we can develop a way for you to then use your OCT, mount your tissue, if it's very small, in a smaller one. If, for instance, your tissue is a little bit bigger and it won't fit inside of a tissue tray, you can try to mount. Um, we, have, we, we have had people take the brain um, and they will put it on the tray and they will secure it with rubber bands. And once it's at temperature minus 80, it won't move. So we can come up with ways to secure your sample either directly to the tray or using our trays on a cryostat. And then we can form a, um, a pedestal that you can stick right into the ice tray or the LN2 where it won't go anywhere. So we have the technology. The kit is flexible depending upon what your needs are for your tissue types. We can design whatever your needs will be to work with the tissue extractor. Great. Um, that was the only other question. Um, Kathy, is there anything else that you'd like to add about frozen aliquoting or the tissue extractor to wrap things up? So I think my my main take home to all of this in when we designed this tool um, were the customers that would call and say, well, I have very unusual tissue types and I have one of this and one of that and it's very small and I am so afraid to cut it because I'm so afraid it'll break or I'll lose something or it will splatter. Um, and they just don't know how to really deal with the small, very small, difficult um, tissue samples of which they only have one of, and they, they don't want to lose any of that sample. This is the perfect solution for those people that have that situation or know that they've got a tissue sample and they only need maybe three cores at 10 microliters and it's fast and it's easy. I did two in th four minutes and then you put everything back. So it's more than, I think it's a way of creating a safe environment to work with tissue to get consistent, small, uniform, cores that can thaw quickly, you can really manipulate that core easily compared to the old fashioned way of, you know, as I call it, chip and dip or, you know, um, cut, dice and slice. Um, so that's, that's really the mindset of why we designed this particular tool. And most people, if you if you go on our website or NBS and look at the 353 benchtop, the two can also go hand in hand. I I, you know, um, Bill in the um, in our demo, uh, he has both, and he intertwines both tools. Awesome. All right. Great. Well, those are all the questions that we had um, for today. Um, so just to wrap up, um, uh, if any other questions arise, um, I encourage you to contact us. There are a few ways that you can contact us at NBS Scientific. You can visit our website, 
um, at www.nbsscientific.com and you can chat with us online. You can also send us an email with your questions um, at info at nbsscientific.com. Uh, and lastly, you can give us a call and we can answer any questions that you have over the phone. So um, I wanna thank you all for joining us today and thank you, a big thank you to Kathy for teaching us about frozen sample aliquoting and showing us the um, benefits of the tissue extractor hand tool. So thank you so much, Kathy. And yeah, that's all that we have for today. Um, we will have um, uh, another webinar in the series um, sometime in the fall. So stay tuned for more information on that. Um, but thank you so much again and have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.